Hey guys, what's up? It's Def Graphics here. Um, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video, and I really hope you enjoy it. I do want you to know that these tutorials are very hard to make, but you guys are very supportive, and I really enjoy doing them. I really hope you enjoy it, and if you have any questions, go ahead and direct message me. And uh, yeah, for now, enjoy my awful PUBG footage. Alright, anyway, see you guys in the next video, and um, I'll plug my Instagram at the end. Alright, thanks guys. What I'm going to be doing today is I've gotten a lot, a lot of requests on how to edit on Photoshop and what are the basics of Photoshop. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to teach you how to simply create an edit like this for a design using four or five very simple tools. We're going to have color lookups, gradient, well, you know, like this. We're going to have, we have like our original right here. Or very simple effects. We're going to use backgrounds, text, cutouts, lighting, gradient maps, and color lookups. These are all very simple things that will make your edits look very pristine and clean and sometimes often professional if you can do it the right way. Anyway, I'm very excited to get into this video and I really hope that you enjoy. So. Um, if you like my videos, uh, subscribe if you like my content, go ahead and uh, follow me on Instagram. All right, anyway, we're going to get started. So the first thing you always want to do when you're working with something is you're going to want to find a high quality image. For this one I use Will Fuller. So you're going to go down here, This after you Google, put on this large than tab. You usually go to 4 megapixels if you're working with a popular player. I chose this image. You can really choose any image that, that you want. The larger their body, the harder to select it is, but often the better content you'll be able to create. Um, so, as I said, I use Will Fuller. So what you're going to do is you're going to save the image, or you can copy it. What I'm going to do is copy it, because I want to save the image again. You're going to go to New, or Open. My, what my computer does is when you copy something, it has the preset of the size already created. I don't know if that's because I have copied a clipboard. So you just go to clipboard, you press OK. Command V, and there you go. Uh, control, if you're working with a uh, uh, Windows, but clearly I'm working with a Mac. Anyway, the first, the most important thing to know about Photoshop is how it works in layers. Photoshop, as you can see on the side right here, you have layers, and you have layers over here. I have them all in groups, but if you open up these groups, you have more layers. So, the most important thing to know is that these layers are how you create your edits and if you've never edited before, you might want to learn how to use layers with like apps or less expensive con um, products. Um, for example, if you've done sports ed edits like on phones, you might know how layers work and you know, overlay effects and so on. So anyway, what I'm going to start with here today is a cutout or a PNG. Um, Photoshop is known for being able to do this. You have several tools that you can do this with. You have your um, Polygon and lasso tool, which um you can select things. So if I want to select, for example, like let's go with the little armband right here. I just click on the edges. This is kind of difficult to use if you've never used Photoshop before. Um, but it, it, again, it's all up to you. Another option that you can use is um. The uh, pen tool, I like this tool a lot, it's really helpful, um, oh goodness, my space bar doesn't work very well, uh, you can easily select things, you can drag to uh, make things change, you can also remove points or change them if your selection isn't, it's the best, it's the longest way to select something, but it's also the most, um, uh, professional looking if you're not looking for a professional look and you just want to design for fun and get it quickly the, the easiest way to do it would be the quick selection and refine edge tool this is definitely the easiest thing I used it a lot when I was younger um earlier in my editing stages uh, you just click around your player and you make sure you select him uh, you normally select this like this um, little plus thing press alt to subtract it and then you just select around your player. Um, 
Since I already have the thing selected that I took a little time in on the other one, I'm just gonna kind of briefly select you, select it just to show how to use the refinance tool. Uh, so here we have our player selected. Make sure you get all gaps. So if you get have gaps like this, you're gonna want to select those as well. By the way, the simple tools you have command is like how you do anything. Command plus is a zoom in. Command minus is the zoom out. These brackets on the side uh, are how you make your brushes bigger and smaller. Um, as I go through, I'll tell you what the commands I'm doing. So after that, you do ref oh wait. Then you're gonna do command shift I. That's gonna invert your selection to, and make sure you have all these edges selected I didn't do the greatest job because I already have a selection and I don't really want to take that long refine edge is really easy to use you have your radius which uh, is the edge how large the radius of the edge that you're um, refining is I usually move it up between like three and five depending on how bad the selection is smoothing is how smooth your edge is if you move it up clearly you'll have a lot smoother of an edge but you'll have more um, uh, background put into the selection so I'm gonna move up smooth feather feathers I do not like the feather tool and I do not recommend using it unless your selection is really bad if your selection is so bad that you have to move your feather up a lot I recommend you just reselect your uh, image now you have contrast which uh, contrasts the line as you can see we have rougher I don't use contrast very often and the last thing I usually use is shift edge as you can see I have like a little line over here so if I use shift edge, it just removes the line a little bit, but you also might have lines. You just kind of have to deal with that. And then you press OK. And then what you can do is you can either press Command J to create a new layer, or you can do the mask. You can mask the layer. And if I remove, delete this, this is my background layer still. And I can, if I use the pen tool, and I choose a normal brush, I can fill in the white. So as you can see, I have the mask. The white is what you have selected, the black is what you have removed. So let's say I wanted to put something in back here. I just click right here. And I uh, select it. So, but then if you want to like choose more player, you can do that too. I like see I missed on the helmet. I can just do that. That's like the best way to get a quick select, like a good selection, but if you already have a good selection and you don't want to do this, you just press Command J and everything's a lot easier. Anyway, I already have my selection, so I'm just going to drag this on over to here. Oh, shoot. Okay, there we go. So as I said, I'm just going to drag my cutout over here, and here I have it. Now what I did, as you can see, the cutout is a little different from here to here. It's because I did this HDR tool that's really helpful. So I'm just going to use this mask because um, I already started it. What you, want, what you do is you duplicate the layer three times. As I said, Command J is how you duplicate the layer. You hide the top layer, you move the little... Actually, what I'm going to do actually is apply these masks, so I just have transparent backgrounds. Then what you do is you move the second layer to overlay. You command shift U to make it black and white. Command I to invert it. Then you go to blur. And you go to Gaussian blur and you move it up to 40. Then you clip that layer to this using alt. You click in between and it just kind of moves it on. So for example if I have like a bright red layer and I just want it on him. I just command click in between and you have it clipped onto it. Now that I have that, I take the top layer and move it down to linear light and I move this down to between 20 and 30 depending on how powerful you want it to be and then voila you now have a nice um, HDR effect which is really helpful anyway now that I have that I have my cutout I have my HDR the HDR is totally optional by the way it's up to you depending what type of edit you're doing um, it's not forced I use it because I feel like it makes my edits look more professional because that's my style but you do not have to use it as I said Anyway, moving on, we have our cutout, and now what I'm going to talk about is lighting. Lighting is so important whenever you're editing. Um, it's I, I can't express it enough. It is the most important tool when you are editing in sports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a background by clicking on this like half cookie and clicking on solid color. 
but I can just use this tool if I click out here I can choose a look um color that is already in here so I can choose the red on his collar for example or I can just choose the red on his the blue on his jersey I'm gonna do that um that looks good to me and uh, now what I'm gonna do uh, there's certain artists that do this uh, I'm not gonna do it for this edit actually I might do it at the end to show you anyway back to lighting I have my cutout now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that clipping thing I talked about earlier I use the solid color and I drag it down to black. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip it on using Alt, clicking in between the layers, and now we have it connected to him. Now what you can do is you can either use the eraser tool and rasterize the layer, or you can just go to the mask, as I said earlier, and choose a black tool. Uh, choose a softer brush, make sure the hardness is at zero or close to zero. You can just make the brush big enough, and you're going to like kind of click the black and then you have a nice lighting. So as you can see, we have our before, now we have what makes it look an artificial light source. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna use brightness and contrast, click that on as well, move it up to 99, or close to there. 100 is good. See that I have my mask selected, I'm gonna do Command I and I'm gonna invert it. So now it's almost as if everything is gone and I can choose what I wanna bring back. So now I'm gonna click on my gradient tool, which is over here. Make sure that you have white selected. So as you can see, I have black. Now if I do a black gradient, it's not gonna do anything because we already have black and black on black will not do anything. But if I want to change that, I just click on here and I click on these, move it up to white. And here we go, we have a white layer. Now this is what this is gonna do, it's gonna do that mask thing I taught you about earlier. And I'm just gonna drag it and I'm gonna have another artificial light source with gradients. So before, after. So here's our entire before. Now we have an artificial light source making it look as if there's light coming from up there, which is really cool. Now another thing I want to talk to you about are gradient maps. It took me so long to figure out how to use gradient maps, which I figured out between um, speed arts from dis different artists. But once I learned how to use them correctly, it changed my artistic and my edits totally, and it makes your content look so much better. Um, you should click on this right here, and you choose black. What it does is it highlights all the black tones and makes it look a lot darker. Now, if you make it too dark, it might make it look a little like you can't see it, so I usually keep it between 30%, 20 to 30, 30 to 50, depending on how dark. Say you're going for like a really dark, serious tone, you can do it, but if you're like looking for light and you just want a little bit of darkness, just I'm gonna keep it around 30. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another gradient map. This is gonna affect the lighting that we talked about earlier. I made a custom preset earlier, which is really easy. You just click on one of these and you choose, okay, I want gray. I want white. That actually looks really cool. Gray and white. And I say okay. New preset. And here it is down here. Alright, so I already have that preset saved. You press OK and you go to overlay and what it is is it selects all those gray tones and makes the light pop out a lot more. This one isn't as powerful, so I'm gonna move it down to like 50 or 60. I'll do 58 for this one. Um as I said Gradient maps will change on the like quality of your image, so if you have a darker image, it's going to affect your image differently than if you had a light image, for example. So, don't choose exactly 58 for your image, because if you're using a different image, you might want to use something else. Now on my gradient map, here's a cool tool that helps everything. If you do shift and click on both of them, and you do command G, it groups them so it makes your edits more organized, totally optional. It does not affect the look of the edit, it just changes makes everything look more organized so that you can um, move more freely about your workspace. I'm going to name this gradient maps or G maps. So, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here, command G. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do that because it's, it's weird for lighting. Now, another thing I want to do that does affect the lighting is I'm going to choose gradient. I'm going to go down to Another preset that I created, it's black and transparent. Make sure you choose up here, it's already up here. It has your foreground layer selected. I have white selected as my foreground color right now, but I do not want white, I want black, which is probably what you're gonna wanna use you too. So you should click on black, this is my custom preset as I created earlier. I have black and transparent, now I'm gonna go to radial, and I'm gonna reverse it. Now I'm gonna choose the center and move it over his head, make the angle a little bit larger 
depending on how big your image is. And I'm gonna move the scale up to about 200. And it helps create that artificial light source we talked about over there. So before and after, um, it really focuses the image on your player. Now, this cutout, as I said earlier, is not the best cutout because you can see we have some sides. If I was trying to make a more professional cutout, I would um, use more, a better cutout and I put more time into it. I personally use the pen tool because I'm more advanced in Photoshop, um, but that's totally up to you. Now, we're going to use my favorite thing about Photoshop, color lookups, which took me so long to understand how to use. I still don't understand them fully. What I always do when I make an edit is I go to my abstract and I choose what the abstract profiles do for color lookups is they choose your certain colors so if I choose black and white it selects all the black and white tones but if I choose black light uh, I don't know what that one does blue just like creates a blue tone if I choose um, golden blue it selects all the golden blue tones if I choose green and red oh green and red, choose all the green and red tones, and sienna and blue for example, all the sienna and blue tones. So I really like this because it makes it, it gives it like a cool overlay look that makes it look um, more, uh, I don't know how to describe it, I just really like the look of it and it makes it look, I don't know, it's what most editors call CC, if you ever see someone calls, calls something CC, usually it's something to do with color lookups. So now that I have my color lookup, you can always adjust something. By the way, Sienna Blue, I chose Sienna Blue because as you can see, the text in the uniform has a lot of blue and a lot of like red or kind of Sienna looking. Um, I was using like the, um, the Packers or the Celtics. They have more green, so I would choose green and red. Um, whenever I, because I'm a Broncos editor, I always use Sienna Blue because it has orange and blue. It's the closest to orange and blue. Then what I always do is I use selected color to boost that color. So if, if it's too, um, for example, the red is kind of weak in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make red pop a little more. So we have that before and then we have that pop and that red that I like. Um, color lookups are really fun to play around with. Three strip makes things pop. I cannot describe all of these to you. Depending on what Photoshop you might have, you might have different presets. Uh, for example, my school doesn't have half of these, only has like half, um, but my home computer has a lot more. Uh, you can play around with these, you can use hue, move these on hue, it changes the colors a lot. Um, one of my favorites to use is drop blues, what it does it is it drops the blues, and it's really fun to use if you're like, it makes them, um, alright, so, I'm gonna do this, so now I have all my drop blues. And I have before my CC and after my CC. Um, now, I, what I am going to do is I'm going to show you how to use text because text is kind of difficult to use if you've never used it before. Um, you go to this T down here and you just click and you have your font. You can download custom fonts from the internet. Um, I have Edo, it's a kind of a rough font. And I'm going like, to write Will Fuller, for example. I'm going to change the text to white because that's what I want. And I'm going to move it down here. Then you can write different things. For example, on the other one, I have all this. So, anyway, that's how you create a simple edit using color lookups, gradient maps, lighting, text, and cutouts. Um, I hope this helped. If it did, leave a comment. If you have any questions, you can always email me. Email takes a little bit longer for me to respond because I'm not on my email very often. You can always direct message me on Instagram or just leave a comment. Comments actually take me a really long time. I don't recommend commenting. Uh, anyway, what I, the biggest thing I can recommend as an editor, if you've never edited before and you're trying to get into it, is use your creativity. I have on here, it says explosive. Um, Will Fuller is extremely, if you've never seen him play before, he's an extremely explosive and quick player, like fast and explosive. I've had things that say Will Fuller to me. Um, so this really, I'm just saying, use your creativity, use your mind, don't copy off other editors. You know what, I, I did that a lot when I was a newer editor, I would just copy off other people. Like, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but the double of or something like that. He, um, he's a really popular editor. 
and I really like this technique, but I did copy off him, and I'm disappointed that I did that, because it copies off bigger editor style. And um, you don't want to do that. Use your own creativity. Another thing that I recommend is sometimes you'll go through editing slumps where you just can't find that creativity. Do not force it. You will not create good content. Take a break, do something else, and um, come back later. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, um, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe if you like my content. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.